Those who can, do. Those who can't, talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people. Or can you step in? Mm -hmm. They run. They laugh. I see the glow shining in their eyes. Well, good Taco Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, it is, it, it's crazy because tomorrow is the 1st of May. Tomorrow is the 1st of May. And I believe after 4 o'clock today, I believe after 4 o'clock today, because typically everything that happens with the NFL is always on a Tuesday at 4 o'clock. And I think that that is the window closing for comp picks to be uh, added. And I think that's why Zeke Elliott has not been uh, officially signed just yet because they don't want to lose any of those comp picks. You know, um, I am... My channel is a little bit different than what everybody else's is. And there's it, whether you like me or hate me, um, there are channels that will have exactly what you like. And it gets to be interesting how I do my channel versus others. One thing I like to do is I like to try and be, because in my life I'm known as the guy who fixes problems okay the problem solver you know with construction and things um so for me i like to try and put together the pieces and figure out how it's going to work i love history and things like that and i wonder if there's a change maybe i'm wrong right now but i feel like there is a change and a sense of urgency in in the last week Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I get clowned, of course, by all of the uh, Eagle fans and 49er fans. It's amazing how many emails that these guys send me. Uh, it, I, I want to actually read a couple real quick. Um, one that's uh, labeled Dak. How many times has your fat ass jerked off to Dak Prescott, then wiped it up with your wife's panties, you grease ball. Okay. Next one is daddy. Next time your Cowboys will win a Super Bowl, you'll be six feet under, you tubby man. Us Eagles and 49er fans live rent-free in your fat-ass head. Enjoy mediocrity. Okay. Let me see. I know. Oh, of course, Jason does them on a daily basis. I don't want to hear a lack of talent next year when you're crying and drunk falling out of your chair. You're starting to sound like a dumbass Eagle fan, and you keep uh, airing reruns of excuses and dog shit. And it's like, damn, some of this shit is hard. But then this morning, I'm going to read a little bit from Rhonda Lovely Sparks. Now, this made my day, okay? If I can get it open. My letter penned to Mark Holmes and Joe Boo Sports Report. You have a valuable way of speaking to our new generation, men and women, about commitment and relationships. This is what we also love about listening to you that sets you above the rest, just being honest and positive. Not enough content creators have the history of being... Um, being to their uh, content because they are younger and possibly missed out on that old-fashioned raising. That's that's really cool. And I want to say thank you very much, Rhonda, because, you know, when, when you start seeing so much hate and venom, you know, we should be able to have a difference of opinion without talking about, you know, my, my weight challenges. But that's the kind of world that we live in right now. So my thing right now is... I wonder, because I feel like there's a sense of urgency since last week. And I'm beginning to think that this might be the moment that we look back. If, if things go the way I hope they do, I hope they do. 
because I know, you know, people are laughing that, oh, we resigned Zeke Elliott. Okay, that is not the complete solution, I don't believe. We resigned Damian Wilson. People, of course, are like, oh, man, he's old. Yeah, this is true. But you have to have a rotation of players. You can't have all guys that are home runs. And the Cowboys, what I believe they're trying to do is they're trying to spread out the money as much as possible. They're trying to say, if we sign one of those big-name free agents early, okay, if we go out and sign, you know, one of those guys, then it's going to cost us more money. We've gotten Derrick Henry, who you don't know. Is Derrick Henry still going downhill or not? I'm not saying so. Just giving that for example. If you do, do sign Derrick Henry, you now lose that fifth-round compensatory pick, and you got to pay that salary that was $9, $10 million. So the Cowboys are looking at it and saying, Maybe I can get three players for that price and hold on to that fifth round compensatory pick and maybe use that for trade bait where I brought in a Stefan Gilmore or a Brandon Cooks. You may not agree with that, but that's their philosophy and that's how they feel they'll get the biggest buck. The idea of them not signing the contracts for Dak Prescott and stuff, it may behoove them to say, We'll take a $55 million hit this year and get that out of the way, do a new contract next year when we've got $100 million of cap space at the moment and be in better shape as opposed to saying we're going to take $90 million of salary this year and add it to a record-breaking contract and hamstring it every single year. Take the pain now and get away from all of these um, – contracts that we've redone and are paying dead money down the road that, that's a possibility but i think that what may really be the changing moment here was jane slater or ambiguity. which okay. means you don't know what's right around the corner okay jane slater nfl network trust me i get budgeting i've been working on it over the years uh but my job is to explain to fans, friends, and family who don't understand when you've got these three free agents, particularly Dak, we see in the past, I don't think us covering this team were surprised that a deal hasn't gotten done, and typically they don't get done until training camp. But why not work on those deals earlier so that you have the flexibility to go get those veterans that have led to success in the last two postseasons? Your problem is that uh, you... <laughs> Well, I'm answering your question, but you don't have many problems. I, re I really, you're excellent. But uh, the point is that you may be working on it and not moving anything but your eyebrows. Who in the world would think that we're not working on it? I work on it. It pops open at 2 in the morning sometimes. What you're actually question is, is why don't you have something done and negotiated and put in the drawer? Well, we'd like to see some more, uh, more uh, leaves fall. We'd like to see some more action. It's called option. A lot of guys need to hand it off. First guy through the line. Another one will keep it another step, decide whether to pitch it or not. He'll decide whether to turn up field with it, and then he's still got a pitch left. So it's called option quarterback. That's working the problem. That's working the problem. I've spent my life being an option quarterback. And I can go right out to the damn sideline and still leave a pitch in me. So I can do that. And that's just a, a style that you have. And so you never know. You might give money to somebody that you shouldn't have given it to. We've done that. You got two or three of those names around here for me. I've been reading about them all week. <laughs> so I know they're out there. And I shouldn't have handed it off as quick. Should have gone on out and seen a few more. I uh, see some more defense before I either pitched it or kept it. So to say that you're not working on it and going is, is not the right answer. What they differ with you is your style. Because it's on your mind, it'd be madness 
not to know that uh, uh, the contracts are ahead. I want to see a few more cards played, candidly. If you got trouble with when the timing is around here, it's because I'm not ready to go. Yeah. And you don't worry about those numbers going up as a result of other teams paying some of these players at their positions? I worry about, if you're asking me, do I worry about things going up, uh, not worry, but I probably have as good a feel as anybody living on this earth what the cap is going to be three years from now and four years from now, five years from now. I really do. Um, um, we've got, got exceptional insight into where the cap is going to be. All right, so here's my, my point on this is I feel like that was the peak you know, that, that pimple that literally was about to bust. We have just been building this abscess over and over and over. Everything that has gone on this offseason has been completely just butt ugly. The Cowboys having lack of doing anything, that everything kind of came to a head right then and there. And Jane Slater took the, the razor blade and just cut that sucker open and all that pus just ran out. Sorry about the details in there, but I do like Dr. Pimple Popper. Um, because what it feels like now, as and, and I know that people are going to, they're, they're kidding us, they're joking us about Zeke Elliott coming in there and things. I still believe that Dak Prescott kind of like is waiting to see more leaves fall too. As far as the contract goes, we don't know because see, everybody keeps acting like Dak Prescott is, you know, little Mary sisters of the poor. Please, sir, can I have some more, you know, um, and so on. But we don't know if Dak Prescott kind of said, you know, I want to see what you guys are going to do before I decide whether or not I'm going to stay. I'm not getting any younger, Jerry, and neither are you. If we're going to do this, let's do this. If we're not, that's okay. I'll do this elsewhere. Because now all of a sudden, you're seeing the Cowboys getting more and more aggressive about players. You're not going to see the big name players, but you could go through and say, well, the Ravens, they signed Odell Beckham Jr. And everybody got excited because Odell Beckham Jr., that's a name you know. Look at you know that one-handed catch for the Giants and things. That's exciting. The Cowboys, eh, they signed Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks had a better season than Odell. Brandon Cooks is still with the Cowboys. Odell is out there now. And people are saying, go out and get Odell. And it's like, you don't realize what you have. And so the Cowboys are trying to fill in as many of these places. They recognize that they were being out physical on the field. That there was a problem at linebacker where we literally – we're using safeties that weren't linebackers. And as we look right now at the list of guys we have at linebackers, of course, Micah Parsons is an ed edge rusher, but we got Eric Kendricks, who's that veteran who knows the system of Mike Zimmer and what she's going to do. We got Damone Clark, who is a little undersized, but is a better weak side linebacker. We got Overshone coming back, who we feel like is going to be a good run stopper. And you got Marcus uh, Martis. Lahufa, who is a true run-stopping linebacker as well in the draft. You had a veteran who has experience and everything else in Damian Wilson. You got Brock Mortensen, uh, that's a rookie. You added up Jason Johnson and Brian Vaughn, all as rookies. So the Cowboys, as much as we look and say they're not doing anything, they've addressed linebacking completely. And when we look at this, you know, the hate mail that I get and everybody, it says Cowboys didn't do anything. Now, again, you have potential, okay, which is latent. You need that to become kinetic. You don't know if the guys that you get are going to play the way you hope they do. But when I look, now this is Brian Baldinger, who has, just get a taste of, oh, wow, Cooper Beebe. Dude is a beast. I thought Cooper Beebe was the best guard in this draft. Pure guard. I mean, you just watch him in this Texas game. I don't care who he was going against. Devondre Sweat, Byron Murphy. Like, he wired him up. 
start to finish in this game. If you want to watch one game of Cooper Beebe, watch him against Byron Murphy right here. I mean, Murphy was the first defensive tackle taken in this draft. He's trying to grab his wrist, but his feet keep moving, so he can't get past him. And all he does is just stay in front of these guys. Like, here comes Murphy to him right here. He squares up with him right here, and he just shuts him down. He can't get off him because what he does is he wires him up. Watch Great his feet feet. move. Great He's got feet. a big square base, 330 pounds. Watch how – this is away from the slide now. Like, this is the toughest block for an offensive lineman right here. He just runs him right by the quarterback. So, that was a touchdown. All right, the quarterback's able to step up. Like, one play after another. Here he is. Just wired Murphy up. Murphy wants to go inside. He covers him up. Murphy wants to try to come back, get his hands off. He can't get his hands off him. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful stuff. Like, this is, this is what you want to see. You want to see this right here. You watch him right here. Like, just watch him clear space out in the run game. Just take him for a ride, like an Uber lift right there. Let the back cut right off him. Like I thought BB was the best guard in this draft, and he's big and he's wide, and now he's a cowboy. Good pick. There you go. So the Cowboys, you know, I look at that and remember how many times that Biotis literally just gets run down the, you know, run, run back literally like he is – the quarterback. I mean, he is literally upfield. And so, again, it's going to be a transition from guard to playing center. But you look at that and say the potential is there. And I'm not going to go through, and I know 49er fans are, and, and Eagle fans are going to say we suck and all that. Well, the reality is we'll be able to compete. We won't be, you know, this team that the way they talk about us being, you know, like a three or four win team. The team has some players. If that offensive line is good, and if we can learn to stop the run, which exactly what Mike uh, Zimmer is here for, and understand that some of the pieces that we let go, the Cowboys looked at that and said, you know what, this shit ain't working. Bringing back the same guys and doing the same thing that you did before that didn't work doesn't all of a sudden mean that it's going to work. But I feel like all of a sudden the Cowboys have kind of kicked it into gear, and now they're trying to make some moves. Now, we'll see over the next few weeks and things if that is, in fact, the case. But we may be looking at the change. Let's uh, finish this off with um, a little talk about Zeke. Past his physical, he still has not signed a contract, but it's going to be a deal for worth up to $3 million to bring him back to the Dallas Cowboys. And it's a situation where everybody could see this deal coming. He yeah. met with the Cowboys last week. There's been talk of a reunion for weeks. The Dallas Cowboys didn't draft a running back. He hadn't found a home. It's almost like these two sides were destined to be with each other this upcoming season. Zeke Elliott meant more to Dallas this season than he would anyone else. The Dallas Cowboys meant more to him than they would anybody else. And this was a marriage waiting to happen that will become official tomorrow once he officially signs. Yeah, Adam, they did address a lot of needs in the draft, right? Taking mm -hmm. tackle Tyler Guyton in the first round, Cooper Beebe in the third round, who likely is going to compete for the starting center job. But as you mentioned, one need they didn't address was running back. And that, of course, does lead to them bringing in Zeke Elliott. But look who we're going to bring in here. Mel Kiper Jr., fresh off another standout performance at the NFL draft. Mel, no running back on that list for Dallas. You like nope. what they did last week? I like some of what they did, Laura. I said three offensive linemen have to be brought in, and I think their seventh round pick, Nathan Thomas from Louisiana Lafayette, could be a guy they can develop, and maybe in three years you'll be hearing from him. But I think right away the running back spot, you can give them the ball and let them go as long as they can block. And Mina knows the importance of that for a running back. You don't get on the field unless you can as a rookie, but if you can do that, instincts take over. You can be as good as a rookie running the ball and catching as you will be down the road. It's the only position you don't need experience if you can block. Mm -hmm. So these guys come right in, they're running wild. And so they did not take one, which was surprising. Waited until the sixth round to take a wide receiver. Did add, as I say, those three offensive linemen and Marshall and Nealon, a defensive end in the second round. So they did a good job hitting neat areas, but they missed on the running backs throughout the entire draft. And as I said, waited until the sixth round to take a wide receiver. 
Yeah, I'm really surprised they didn't take one. I know I've been critical in the past of teams that have taken them in the first or maybe even the second round, but you saw a lot of really good backs go off the board in the mid-rounds where I do think it makes sense to draft one. I'm kind of of two minds about their class as, as a whole. On one hand, I like the players. I think they have high upside. Uh, I think that... Uh, this is a front office that has drafted really well over really the last well. years and deserves the benefit of the doubt. But on the other hand, when you look at these players, uh, it really reinforces kind of what's been a trend with this offseason with the Cowboys, which is they may say they're all in, but their moves seem to indicate they aren't. Tyler Guyton, super athletic tackle, but I think a lot of people view him as raw. Somebody will have to make the, maybe the move from right to the left side. Marshawn Nealon, small school, a lot of production there, but again, there's a little mm -hmm. bit of projection. Even if you think of Trey Lance as part of this draft class, right, because it was the fourth round pick, again, that's a project that's developmental. There you go. And so I just question, okay, what are they telling us about their timeline and their strategy by seemingly focused on a draft class for the future rather than trying to take players who can contribute immediately and fill obvious needs? Yeah, I think the interesting part about the draft when it comes to the running back room is post-draft, what running back rooms in the NFC do we think are like less reliable and less um, as far as like higher expectations than the Cowboys? I think... You know, maybe the Giants, maybe the Bucks, and even those guys. You know, Giants signed Singletary in for agency, so you're intrigued by his impact on that offense. And then the Bucks have some young players. The Cardinals drafted Trey Benson out of Florida State, so there's just so much unproven element-wise in the Cowboys' backfield outside of Zeke, who's coming off an okay year. Draft-wise, the, the, this draft for the Cowboys will come down to both Guy and Abibi. If they become really good starting offensive linemen, it's a win. If it's not, one, yeah. there's some questions. I guess the question for the, maybe for Mel is, Guyton, do you think that Guyton is the offensive lineman that is meant to keep Bill from last year? I would say right tackle, Dano. For me, I think if you're asking Tyler Guyton, who's still learning and developing and needs coaching, and they did a really good job with Tyler Smith, who came in with all those penalties at Tulsa, had some struggles early on, and really has he emerged as a star. What did they do with him? Obviously, guard left tackle. Yeah. What do you do with Tyler Guyton? I think it's right tackle. To ask him to move over, I think, would be asking an awful lot his first year in the NFL when he's still he's learning. He's going to be left tackle. That's to deal with the best edge rushers in the world. I think that would be uh, that would be stretching it a bit for me. Yeah, so the big thing then is going to be, is, is BB a, a day one starter? Because then B, for this draft to pay off, for, to Mina's point for the all-in, BB's going to have to be there starting either really left center. guard or center. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's the, the situation for the Cowboys. I understand they have decent pieces in their backfield, but if for, a, if for a team, an organization that said they wanted to run the football and all that stuff, outside of Ezekiel Elliott, there's not a really a person or a room in the NFL running back-wise that has less proven commodities. Do you think... All right, I'm going to leave it right there, but here's what I will say is that's partially Mike McCarthy's thing. Mike McCarthy, who did say, I just want to run the football, that's not ever been his M.O. He is a guy who loves to pass the football, which is why getting guys that can block, pass block, especially Guyton, who is really, really good in pass blocking, better pass blocking right now, than run blocking, goes right into the hands of what Mike McCarthy wants to do. But then again, what do I know? I'm just a guy with a day J job and a voodoo doll. And I got to get out of here and get to work because I got bills to pay. I appreciate you guys. Peace out.